and welcome to Perspectives in Focus. I'm your host, Tia Young, and we have a great show for you today. Uh, uh, several weeks ago, we had Michael Hamilton with us to tell us uh, about the situation with his brother, Scott Hamilton. Scott was given uh, a lethal dose of medications uh, in the hospital and uh, within five days had died. Uh, it has taken the family about 25 years to really go through all the pain and agony. And it resulted in a, a wonderful book that has been written by his sister, Joe Hamilton. The name of the book is For the Love of Scott, and I highly recommend that you get this book. Uh, today we're going to finish up questions that we had for a couple of weeks ago because I, we, just, we just weren't able to get to the, to the end of the questioning. So uh, without further ado, please welcome back Michael Hamilton. Hi, Michael. Hi. Thank you so much for no. being willing to return. You're welcome. On this show. Um, the one question that I had um, when we ended at the last taping, why do you think Scott's story needs to be told? Well, I think first and foremost, um, it was kind of his dying request to, to my sister, which I didn't realize until she started doing this that that had even happened. Um, That's right. He did. There is something in the book about him saying, do um, have to tell this story? Even through so he knew all he of his pain and agony, he, he, he had the foresight to know yeah. that, that his story had to be told to help people. Um, right. By that time, what had happened, it was too late. Um, you know, he knew he was in grave, grave danger, and he summoned up that courage somehow through all of that to tell my sister that you've got to tell my story. So first and foremost, I think that is the number one reason why his story needs to be told. Secondly, I think people need to be aware, and all too many people are aware, of the, the harm and, and errors that are made today in hospitals and by other uh, health care givers yes. that something something needs to wake up the sleeping giant to say this is unacceptable and changes changes need to be made um, right. the good news are the good news is that some of these changes are are being made it's That's just good. slower than it should be i mean it's almost been 30 years now since right. since scott had died and and we were told uh, at the time um, you know there were certain things that we talked about with the caregivers up at the hospital he was at and we're we asked, you know, how did this happen? How can it be prevented? At the time, I was in, I was in information technology, and it just blew my mind that this this error could even have gotten through the system. Right. Well, the systems the systems are the problem. Uh, everybody assumed that everybody else was was checking and and counter checking that what he was receiving for his medication was correctly, and in fact, nobody was checking. Right. Where in reality, the, the system so should have caught the error should before have, it yeah. even happened. Michael. It is inconceivable to me that someone was not able to determine that something was wrong. I was in the hospital about 20 years ago for a thyroidectomy, and the doctors and nurses, they were always coming in, checking, you know, for vital signs and checking the, the medications that were, uh, you know, being given uh, to me. So, you know, I, it just, my mind is just boggled with how did someone just one person, not know that something was wrong. Because that, that's all it was, a matter of looking, you know, at a label right. on a bag. Right. My understanding is because of the drug he was receiving was sensitive to the light, it, there was a bag of some sort over the bag. Oh. So in order for somebody to look at the dosage and measure, make sure it was right, mm -hmm. they had to lift up this bag. Now, whether or not that happened, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I would hope it would have. Yeah. Um, the, other, the other possibility is the bag was labeled correctly, but the content of the bag was, was not. That was, that's where the error possibly occurred. So all the checks and balances that we were told were in place to catch these kind of things obviously did not they work. Were not. And yeah, they were it, not. it comes back to, to a system problem that even though the checks and balances were there, the system failed. Tell us a little bit about the summit. I know you're you're here uh, with your family and that you've mm -hmm. been involved in this in the summit this uh, weekend. Tell us a little bit about that. 
It was it was quite quite eye opening for me. Uh, I didn't know what to expect. Joe called us and said, you know, I've been invited by uh, Dr. Charles Denham, who, who's heading up this effort, um, to the premiere of the uh, surfing the surfing the healthcare tsunami. Um, right. Cut your own board, I believe, is, is right. the name of it. Right. So we were invited to the premiere, and then they had a summit of of several professionals, um, doctors, all the way from doctors to CEOs to a lot of gray matter in the mm -hmm. in the room when when so they were having So is it the just summit. a national uni United States effort or is it It was it international. Global? There were it's people global. there from Switzerland oh, wow. and wow. and some great great minds, great people doing some some great work to mm -hmm. to get the word out and and change some of these things that are occurring. And uh, it was it was very eye opening some of the efforts that are taking place in a concerted effort to really focus in on some of the problems that are occurring and and fixing those things and great things are being done but there's still a lot more work, a lot more work to do, yeah. and and the vi the movie premiere was was awesome. It's only 15, 53 minutes. It's going to start airing, I believe, today or or yesterday. I think today on the Discovery Channel. Mm -hmm. um, so people would really need to watch that. And, and, the, and it's a movie that same name about the tsunami. Yes, how is, it is called that. Yeah, surfing the healthcare mm -hmm. tsunami. Could you get a feel uh, for whether or not any of the uh, professionals there had read Joe's book? I could not. Um, we did provide some copies for some people good. at the premiere. Yeah, that's um, good. I believe Dr. Uh, Dunham had read it. Um, there was other people that we talked to at the event that had the book and were yet to read it. There were some of them that were going to read it on their plane, mm -hmm. on the plane on the way to some somewhere else. So some more more people will be reading it. But there were other stories that people were familiar with and they're in the movie of similar similar things. The, the Emily Jerry story, for example, was of a little girl who was overdosed with heparin that uh, yeah. died tragically in the right. same same situation. Right. So it's, it's almost like it's not an isolated case. Definitely it's happening uh, just all over, Definitely probably all not. over the world. All over that the world. You're, you're and, hitting that. And probably more so in people that are, are poor because those yeah. conditions or yeah. health care conditions are worse. And you know what's scary, what was scary to me in reading Joe's book is that this was not like the corner um, health facility. This was a, a major a major hospital, probably maybe even a teaching or a university hospital. I don't, I don't know, and I, I, I don't mean for you to have to tell us that, but um, that was scary to know yeah. that you've got that level of uh, organization and something like this uh, could happen. There yeah, should be definitely. zero tolerance. He uh, for this zero cycle. tolerance. Yes. Yeah, that's what that is. in my in my estimation, that's what it should be. And that's the goal. That's that's the good news in all this. That that's the goal to get. There's another video uh, called Chasing Zero, and that that is that involves uh, Dr. Denham and Dennis Quaid, you know, from his life experience with his with his, his twins, twins being yeah. overdosed and. Yeah. Uh, and I believe that was that was the one where they overdosed with heparin. The uh, Emily Emily Jerry story was a different drug. It's a different. Was Dennis Quaid? Is he is he here for this summit? Uh, he was not here. He was not he, here. Okay. Uh, we were told he would have liked to have been here, but was on a movie set. But we were also right. told that Dr. Denham is going to hand deliver Joe's book to him uh, this oh, next week. Oh wow, so. that's fantastic. So we're hoping we hear yeah. some of the outcomes from from oh, that. Oh yeah. So. Well, I've got to ask you, uh, Michael. Do you trust the doctor or do you trust the hospitals? How, how, what is your feeling about that? I mean, I, I'm uh, sure it's, maybe it's the same as it was 25 years ago, but maybe well, not. Maybe you softened a little bit. or Definitely not after what, what we've been through. Um, you know, I grew up, we had, a, I think in our previous interview, I talked about my hometown. We had a great, great hometown doctor that more or less did anything. Mm -hmm especially on the human side, you know, he took care of the human side before he took care of the, the right. medical side. I bet he'd even come to your house to make a house oh, visit. Oh, no doubt about it. <laughs> come no, make a house no visit. No doubt about it. Um, <laughs> you know, he was also the physician for our football team. He never missed wow. a football game and, and just just a great, mm -hmm. great hometown physician. Um, you'd almost call him like a country doctor. He was, right. and so we were very blessed that way. Um, you know, a quick phone call to the office and it was only four blocks away and right. he'd, he'd get you in and take care of you. And, right. And that, to me, growing up, that was healthcare. I didn't know anything different. Um, and most of us in our family have been blessed that we haven't had any any serious health health conditions. Um, but after Scott's uh, situation, we certainly have to question every time we go to the doctor. Michael, 
Do you trust the hospital, any hospital or a doctor? I know it's been 25 years uh, ago, almost 30 years ago, and um, I, I can imagine what your answer would have been 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. But I'm just wondering if over the years, if you've softened any or if you're still very cautious about the health profession, medical uh, profession. Still very, still very cautious. Um, my wife does a much better job of researching and thinking through, you know, how how we're treated with our healthcare professionals than I do. Um, I've gotten probably better over the years. Um, but, you know, what alternative do we have? We get sick, we, we can choose where we go, but ultimately you still have to rely on the healthcare profession to, sure. to be treated. Um, you know, it's not like you can pick a different airline or, you know, a different automobile brand right. or, um, it's a network and, and certainly there are some that are better than others and, and hopefully uh, there's a part of luck that plays into it as well. I mean, when you consider 100,000 people a week uh, that die of harm of unneeded deaths uh, in healthcare facilities, 200,000 if you consider the infection rates. That's true. Um, that's just way too many. It's way too and many. it could happen to any of us. Right. Um, that's our right. family has, has been fortunate um, that, that we've had no major healthcare problems um, for the most part, just routine routine type things, um, but I remember when my, my older daughter was born, um, we went through the experience of she was born C-section, which was somewhat tra dramatic in the, in the first place. Um, and then I remember going to the nursery the day after she was born and seeing handwritten on her chart that Hamilton baby has a heart murmur with a question mark behind it. So right away, all these feelings, that, experienced with Scott right. come flooding back you know is is they got a question mark beside it do they know does she have a heart murmur here we go again is there going to be Drama. more <laughs> problems more mistakes um, you know it was it was awful at a time when you would had a newborn baby and right. you should be enjoying that moment um, in fact Consequently, I think it bothered me so much at the time that three days later I had appendicitis and ended up in the hospital myself. <laughs> and part of, part of the claim was that it was caused from the stress and, mm -hmm. and anxiety that, that happened. So, um, Did you find yourself questioning them more? Uh, because a lot of times when we are uh, dealing with uh, the health professionals, uh, we feel inadequate, you know, because we feel like they know and so we don't question them, whatever they yeah. say. Uh, we just take it at face value. Have you found yourself being more um, vocal when you're dealing with health professionals and not being afraid to say, well, what does that mean? I have, probably not as much as I, sh I should be. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm uh, more introverted, I guess. Uh, again, my wife, I kind of lean on her to right. check and double check, check things, and she's very, very good at that. And, um, which gives me more peace of mind, but a lot of it is, is the health care provider you happen to have, like my primary care physician. I have trust in him, um, but yet you can still see some of the hubris that, that's involved. Um, right. We have a very a great care facility in our hometown, um, mm -hmm. and you know you hope you hope everything's done and happening the way it should be, but right. again, there's an element of luck involved. It's just some of these systems that are in place there's just too many places where they can break and where there can be errors, and that's what we need to eliminate. Right. I agree with you 100%. <laughs> I like that. Michael, it has been a pleasure to have you on the, uh, on the show. Um, I, can't, I wish I had right, some right words that I could say that would make it all go away <laughs> or make it better, but unfortunately, I can't. We just have to, to go through it. I thank you so much You're welcome. Uh, for coming on Perspectives and Focus. And I thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>